With our packs on, off we went. The approach to the cave was super simple, maybe 700 to 1,000 feet of elevation gain. The trail was present and easy to follow as we were on the Mount Century Summit Trail. The landscape was remarkable, all beige colors transitioning to a snow-covered landscape. The remnants of summer flowers and grasses only showing stems and intricate sepals remaining. The sepals I saw, even though they were filled with snow, were red star-shaped and gave contrast to the white landscape. We stopped a few times to shed layers. It was amazing as we climbed out the cozy basin surrounding Emerald Area. Eventually, the highway sounds were non-existent and the winds of the mountain filled our ears. Going up the draw, we stayed to the left of the scree slope and found it more enjoyable to walk up the meadow. At this point, the wind started to pick up. The air was starting to chill off and it felt like frosty spikes hitting my beard. I was just getting into a groove and before I knew it, we were at the traverse. We continued past the traverse to another cave opening. This got us out of the wind and gave us time to transition out of our sweaty clothes and into climbing mode for the second phase of the adventure. I was astonished, however, at how grand this cave was, and it seemed to match the size of a normal interior of a house. We roped up in a simul climbing fashion. The traverse in this time of year had a tricky start. There was a glazing of ice on the rock, which was made easier once Morgan made it through to the top and clipped into an already established bolt. We took turns assisting one another around the section as it was pretty dicey. Finally, the cave opening came into view. The traverse path continued around the mountain, but the face of the rock ballooned inward and away from the path and presented us with a 45 degree cone-shaped entrance to the chasm. The entrance to the booming ice chasm was initially found by accident by members of the Alberta Speleological Society while attempting to reach a different cave in June 2008. It was subsequently explored and mapped by the Alberta Speleological Society. The main shaft, although an inclined passage that is not completely vertical, is considered Canada's second deepest shaft due to technical requirements of descent. This cave is a cold trap cave whereby cold air enters through a bottleneck and is never able to escape, generating conditions for perennial ice. It is speculated that the booming ice chasm may also hold potential as a source of new super antibiotics. This is because it is thought that the specialized species of microorganisms yeah, have adapted to the closed and nutrient limited conditions of the cave. Taking a brief stop to fuel and hydrate, one by one we descended to the main anchors which were 10 to 15 down on the hiker's left. The section of rope was used as a first repel to navigate the opening. The ice around the mouth of the cave during the time of year had already accumulated quite high. I was second to come down after Morgan established a mixed anchor with one bolt which was located under a ledge and an ice screw. The anchor had to be reached while in a super uncomfortable squat position. 
while taking into account to keep your heels down to keep your crampons in the ice. Of course, placing your hand down on the ice in an environment as cold as it was, my hands got wet right away. Heads up for snow, guys. Yeah! Hello, ice. I looked at the roof and wondered if the mixing of the air and the pressure coming from the cave had caused the ice crystals to form all over the ceiling. The temperature was probably a balmy minus one and probably stays minus one all year. Yeah, actually, you know what? It's super balmy in here, which is crazy. I left the opening and managed to get on the tail end of the first line to make room for Johnny and Heather. I wanted to capture as much as possible of this trip so I felt I was in a good position to get some decent shots of the initial descent. Good job. Okay. Looking more closely at the ice, I could see that there was veins in the ice and water trickling within it. Roger. Perfect. Again, I had to remind myself it was November in the Rockies. We used a 120 foot section of dynamic and full 200 foot static rope as our main lines on the way down. Come down a bit more. We decided to leave the first line in as we knew it would be saving time later coming out. How's, how's your thighs, bro? <laughs> okay. The next major rappel was straight down rolling ice waves. Looking to your left, I encountered an enormous ice flow coming from the ceiling of the cave. Near the bottom part of this section, the flow of the ice pitched downward, and the anchor was made in the middle at the base of a huge ice How dome. Blue this ice is. It's so gorgeous. The second to last pitch put us in a flat spot where the cave veered off to another chimney which who knows where that went. We hung out there for a little while admiring the opaque yellow crust which had formed on the outside of the rock. When looking at the ceiling you could tell where the rusty deposits were and it was interesting to see the veins in the rock. Tapping into some geology knowledge, this cave is a limestone cave which was formed through erosion over millions of years ago. As the Ice Age glaciers melted, this also affected the water table which constructed the cave. With the addition to slightly acidic rain, over time this would also impact the limestone. The colors of this area were an interesting kaleidoscope of grays, ambers and blues. On the way down from this location, I could not help but notice how clear the ice was. It was such a very pale blue. If you took a closer look, you even saw all the freeze-thaw cycles depicted with the layers of rock stuck in the ice. I was last one down on the bottom and we left both static and dynamic ropes fixed at the last ledge. This spawned another question. Is there a fluctuating rate of thaw every year? Does the thaw get influenced by weather we have throughout the year? Even being a cold trap cave, do these things still happen? Does the outside rock warm and this warmth penetrate far into the rock? 
I just wanted to know more. At just shy of 600 feet down, the bottom of the cave was surprisingly flat. The ceiling was as tall as a two-story house, and even at the bottom, our conversations were loud from the echo. There was dirt and a mixture of clay deposits along the walls. We kept our lunch spot on the bottom part of the scree that had developed. This cave is special and we didn't want to impose or disturb the environment. From the wiki information, we were trying to see the science that was the cave. Oh yeah, he says. Oh yeah. Just gonna go over your rope. <clears throat> I kept thinking as a kid growing up in the Elk Valley, in all the times I had driven past this mountain, it was there the whole time, cocooned in its frosty environment. Anchors were pulled and the order was started. Big kudos to Morgan for taking on the task to lead the rest of the way. I was on gear cleaning and last to ascend. While ascending, it was really cool to see everyone's headlamps, illuminating the ice and giving it a really intense blue hue. I'll clean him. I'll clean him because my rope is uh, going this way. Up to the next anchor, I slowed my approach and then finally clipped in. This trip had a few firsts for me. Semi-hard boots, crampons, and ice screws. It was interesting how strong ice really was. Once again, Morgan with a full pack and the static line clip to him led a full 120 foot pitch to the mouth of the cave. I found this section more demanding as it was a lot steeper. Easy ice to the real true ice climbers, but nevertheless, it was still a huge focus for me. Finally, the mouth of the cave. This section I really had to dig deep. Again, I was faced with crouching into a duck walk, getting off the line to the anchor, unclipping the static line from the system and then attaching this to Heather's system. I got on the static, cleaned all the other lines and helped pull up the dynamic rope. There, I made it. Retrieved my pack and then re-entered the world. Just as predicted, windy and full on blizzard. Oh, and total darkness. Because why would it be any less dramatic? I am proud to have put this trip together with Morgan, and I am happy everyone gave 100% effort. Here's to the next adventure.